Autumn is right around the corner. That means beautiful, vibrant, falling leaves. Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today, we're embracing our autumnal fascination with the Can't Sleep Creations Welcome Autumn collaboration. Hosted by my super talented crafty gal pals, Dawn at Shabby Meets Bling, Annie of Crafting with Indiana Jones, and of course, May. Hi. You'll find links to Dawn and Annie's channels as well as the playlist full of our creative friends' best fall projects below in the description box. Please be sure to check them out and, you know, show them some love. I'm making retro-inspired happy fall leaves. Let's get into it. What we're going to need for this project is a favorite fall leaf shape. I have a maple cut out of cardstock and some model magic. This has become my go-to clay. Yeah, so I'm going to grab a handful of Model Magic, knead it, just a wee bit. It comes out of the package pretty soft. I roll it out with my brayer. I want there to be a wee bit of thickness here so that our leaves have some body to them. And I'm going to make three leaves in total. Once I flatten my clay, I'll place my leaf pattern on top of it. And I'm going to use my clay blade to cut around the pattern. You can use an X-Acto to do this too, if you don't have a blade. Or maybe even better, you might have a leaf cookie cutter that you could use. I'm just going to continue around the leaf form until it's completely cut out, and I'm going to do two more as well. And you know I'll be saving all those scraps. Let me just peel off my pattern. I'm just cleaning up the edges a wee bit, cutting off any little stragglers. I'm adding a light impression of the leaves veining with a clay tool. A stylus, skewer, or thin paintbrush handle will do too. Whatever you have handy. I roll out a small clay ball, cut it in half for our cheeks, and I'll roll a smaller ball for our nose. Just as a heads up, all three leaves, the nose and cheeks process, all the same. So we're just going to pop those into place. I lightly press to make sure that there's good contact. For her lips, we're going to roll another ball in between the size of her cheeks and her nose. Not quite as big as the cheeks, not quite as small as the nose. I'll flatten it just a wee bit and pinch the sides to shape our lips into a smile. This is Goldie, and autumn is her time of year to shine. I'm giving her lips a wee cupid's bow with the handle of my tool, and then I'm just going to do a little shaping. Okay, let's get them into place. Lightly pressing for contact. I give her a dot in the center of the lips to make them look pursed, and I'll add a line to separate them. Let's give her stem a slate curl, add a little personality. And we'll add dimples by pushing a brush handle up into her cheeks. Now let's work on Rusty. Rusty here, he's going to have a surprised look. So I'm rolling a thin cane of clay, which I'll use to shape his mail. I've already rolled a small ball for his nose, and I've cut another ball in half to make his cheeks, just like I did with Goldie. We'll pop his cheeks and nose into place. We'll give him some dimples, and I'll make an O shape with the clay cane. I cut away the excess cane. And I'm just going to pinch closed that little section there to make the O. Once I get it how I want it, I'm going to lightly press it into place. I want to ensure that it's well stuck without altering the shape too much. And we're also going to give his stem a wee curl too. So I have all three here. This guy's timber. I did his cheeks and nose the same as the others. His mouth will get painted on. I'm going to set them all aside to dry. Each leaf will get a different shade of orange as a base coat. We're going to start with Timber. He's getting two coats of Ceram Coat Bittersweet Orange, front and back. I grabbed my Folk Art Floating Medium so we can do some shading. I prep my brush by dipping it into the medium, getting a really healthy coat on there. I sideload with Folk Art Daybreak. By scooping it onto the corner of my brush, I'll stroke it on my plate to load the bristles, 
This will spread the color about halfway across the brush, giving it a gradient. It will be more concentrated at the paint corner and fade as it moves toward the middle of the brush. I keep the paint corner of the brush to the edge of the leaf and I'll stroke the paint along that edge and really anywhere that I want to see this color. Um, I, I want to emulate the variation of color that we'd see in an autumn leaf, so I'm just going to play a wee bit. I reload my brush when necessary. And you know, if you're not an orange person, you could do your leaves in green, brown, red, you know, whatever. I'm going to add another layer, this time Americana Irish Moss. And I'm just playing with the color to see, you know, whether I like it or not. Um, just go with it. Now, I've decorated with orange and hints of turquoise, or teal, really, both for the summer and for the fall for many years now. So that's mostly why I chose orange, and I'm going to pull in some of that teal. You'll see. Let's add some ceram coat watermelon, get some red going. So all the colors that I'm using on timber here, I will use on rusty and on goldy, but they won't look the same because I'm just playing. I'm not really following a plan, just doing what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to use some ceram coat oyster white to paint in his eyes, and I'm going to give them two coats. I dot in his iris with Americana bluegrass green using the back of a larger brush handle. And while his eyes dry, I'm going to use my dirty brush, which has the watermelon on it, to dry brush his cheeks and his nose. And I'm also going to add a dry brush of the bluegrass green here, lightly to his nose and cheeks. See, told you I was going to bring in some of that teal color. As I said, this combo is a personal fate. So with a liner brush and hippo gray, shout out to Terry, I outline his eyes and give him lashes and brows. And of course, we're going to give him a cute, happy smile. And now we'll dot in his pupils with Hippo as well. Using a small brush handle, I will use Oyster White to dot on highlights to his eyes, cheeks, and nose. And now I'm going to come in and dry brush his edges with Bluegrass Green to really pull in that color. Bluegrass Green is an Americana color. I'm not sure if I said that. I really like the way he's turning out. I think he's really cute. And now to seal him, I pants on a coat of matte Mod Podge. Timber! On to Goldie. She gets two coats of Ceram Coat Calypso Orange, front and back. And just like with Timber, we'll float in some autumn colors. I'm starting with Ceram Coat Bittersweet Orange, then I'm going to add a layer of Americana Warm Sunset, and then some watermelon along the edges. I'm not really sure what happened, but my camera was off. I thought it was filming, <laughs> but apparently not. So, um, yeah, that's what I did. Okay, so here I'm using my liner brush to add some Irish moss veining. And oyster white for her eyes. Two coats. And like I always say, they're pretty much like capital D's on their side. That's how I make my eyes. Using the dowel end of a dauber, I'll dot in her eyes with Ceramco Turquoise, right in the corner. And I'm going to fill in the, co the bottom corner with my liner. While they dry, I will dry brush her cheeks, nose, and lips. First with Warm Sunset then with watermelon. And I'm just going to continue until I get the depth of color that I'm looking for. I outline her eyes, adding her pupils, la la lashes, and brails with hippo. She's going to need some lovely lashes. Let's add a few lashes at the top too. Oyster highlight dots for her eyes, cheeks, and nose. 
and some line highlights on her lips make them look glossy. She'll get a lovely turquoise dry brushing all around her edges and a top coat of Mod Podge. Gorgeous Goldie. Rusty. Good old Rusty gets two coats of Americana Warm Sunset. Then he gets a shading layer of Calypso Orange, then Irish Moss, and also I added a wee bit of Watermelon. He's going to have wide surprised eyes to match his surprised mouth. And again, I'm just filling this in with the Oyster White. His eyes will be dotted with Ceram Coat Velvet Teal. This is a slightly darker teal, really pretty and rich. Hippo to outline his eyes and dot his pupils, just like the other two. Of course, he gets lashes and brows too. And I'm going to use that gorgeous Velvet Teal to dry brush his edges. Oyster Highlights. You know what, let's give him some lashes up here too. And lastly, a Mod Podge top coat. Good old Rusty. I'm going to display my sweet anthropomorphic autumn leaves on my Dollar Tree pizza pan, which I made a couple of years ago, so I need to glue on some magnets. This pizza pan is so versatile for quick decorating. I'll link my video below in case you're interested. A dab of hot glue on some magnets will do nicely. I got these magnets at Michael's a really long time ago, but I'm sure they still have them. I also found these wood acorns that I painted last year in similar colors, so I added small magnets to them too. Let's get these cuties arranged. Right, okay, there we go. Here's a final look. I hope you like them as much as I do. After the summer, I decorate for Halloween. I don't do fall until after Halloween as part of my Thanksgiving decorations. So that's when these guys will be displayed. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me. Please be sure to check out both Dawn and Annie's channels linked below in the description box along with the playlist. Show everybody some love. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.